Shalom Aleichem. Hi everybody. This is Daniel Yoel, Danny Cohen from Or Halev. With some words going to the month of Tishrei and towards our upcoming Yom Kippur retreat. So Tishrei it reminds me of a teaching from the Midrash in Shira Shirim Rabbah where it says Tashrei Aleinu Ruach Hakodesh V'Shirim Nomar Harbe. Like may or let the the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Ruach, the Holy Spirit, rest upon us and we will sing many songs, say many songs. Like we will really live in the flow of inspiration. And, and, and that's really, like I feel excited just talking about it. Like to the possibility, it's a different way of being alive, a different way of being a human being. A human being, right, is Adam, is that is from Adama, which is an invitation, right, to, to the earth, to be really connected to to our earthiness as humans. And it's also Adam is Adame, like I will be like the divine. So this is the possibility to be really fully embodied, grounded, in touch with the earth, and inspired, right, in the flow of spirit. That those uh, those are happening at the same time. And I think that as we're moving through the process of Chodesh uh, Elul, of the month of Elul, towards the new year and towards the holidays, is an invitation or a call for us to reflect, am I, am I really living in that flow? And of course it's not a binary or you know, an either or. Or is it more like I'm you know, going about my life as a closed system, just recycling the same thoughts, the same stories, the same dramas, the same feelings, the, the same kind of social scripts, just playing these, you know, pre-recorded messages again and again. Or do I have this kind of constant system update coming from the divine through me in, into life? Is my, is my channel clear that I can pick up on that, on that broadcast? And the beauty and the power I find in a tradition is that we have this time of year where not only as individuals but as collective and as communities we are called, we are called to reflect and to see and to course correct. And I think in order to really do that avoda, to, to be in that kind of that kind of work, that kind of reflection, we need a few uh, like a few qualities or a few components. And I would say, um, you know, like like in, in Rosh Hashanah, one of the themes is Hamlachat Hamelach. Hamelach. It's like the the coronation of the divine. And we could think of that in some kind of archaic and like irrelevant ways, like or or kind of abstract, like oh yeah, God is king. Okay, what are, what does that mean? Or we can see it as calling us to say, what are you living according to? What is really you know like if we could peel away layers and see like what's the coding, you know what is giving rise to your life? What's what underlies it? What's the what's animating you? What's motivating you deeply? According to what? According to whom are you living? What is your life devoted to? What is your life devoted to? And is it really devoted to? Is it really in service of something that at the end of the day you will feel really at peace with, that you can die in peace. And maybe that's why, in a, in, a, in a way that we simulate death on Yom Kippur. So that we can really let die what needs to die and choose life so that we can ultimately die in peace, having really lived and having really served something that's not contracted and limited, but of ultimate worth. 
And so I want to guide us in a little bit of practice, a bit of hearkening to see where, where, where we are. And for any kind of practice and any ability to really come in touch with the, the deeper movements and callings, first we need a bit of settling. And we don't want to do forceful settling, but to actually do skillful settling or creating the conditions where settling can happen. So we'll just start with the eyes open and notice the way that the world is contacting us through the senses. You might notice where the eyes want to go. And what happens in the body, in the background, just as you let the eyes go wherever they want to go, or just notice what's contacting you. And how little effort is necessary, right? When we're just bringing awareness to how the senses are being contacted by the world. And we're becoming aware of sounds and of absence of sounds, of quiet. And finding ourselves aware of the feeling of the air, the temperature, the touch of whatever you're sitting or standing on. You might notice even some modicum of quieting, of turning down the volume inside just by bringing attention outside. And then with an intention of humility, of, a, of humble hearkening, we just bring attention in a way that a very attuned and sensitive acupuncturist would feel the pulse and start to discern what are the different currents that are flowing through the body, how are things going. So we bring our attention to the pulse the rhythm, the flow, or the lack thereof, of our lives, of our lives as individuals, as our lives as members of community, and as our lives ultimately as part of the larger collective. And we might start by noticing, where is there a sense of regret? And regret has a very precious intelligence to it when we know how to receive that. We can't just get stuck in the story of what wasn't or what was that we wish hadn't been. But when we really feel into regret, regret around our choices or lack of choice, we can feel the way it puts us in touch with something which is really precious, really important to us, really dear, that we want to live with, to live in honor of, to include in our lives. And we can let that regret really make its imprint on us. And really with the energy of that imprint, feel also the pull of what is precious. We want to orient our lives around. And also we can listen for, attune to the sense of longing. There might be clarity around a specific longing, but there might just be an energy of longing. A kind of holy dissatisfaction with the way things are. That points to, uh, that points to a knowing of how things could be, of something beyond. And then 
can we just let the body be an instrument which takes on the charge of that longing or of that knowing? Even if we don't have clarity around the content or the wither. To also be in the humility and the beauty and dignity of allowing ourselves to, to be claimed by what calls. And then to just allow that energy, that pulse of that call, of that longing to walk us, to guide us, to magnetize us. So I hope that little bit of instruction of offering can give you some direction to explore, to feel into as you go into and through the upcoming holidays. We have an uh, upcoming virtual retreat, pre Yom Kippur virtual online retreat, which you can turn into from anywhere in the world. And here in Israel, also the in-person Yom Kippur retreat. I'd love to see you at either of those and to send each and all of you and all of us blessings for a Shana Tova a sweet and good new year. May it be filled with health, with inspiration, with care, with compassion, with love, with courage. Take care. <laughs>